Okay, we're going to be looking at the questions from the six weeks test uh, from the first six weeks. And as we're reviewing this, I really hope this uh, kind of clicks and gels with you. Um, there was lots of material that we covered this first six weeks. And it's kind of like math. If you don't understand how to add and subtract, you will never get how to multiply and divide. And so we're kind of building like that. This next six weeks, we're looking at chemical reactions, physical and chemical properties. And it's really important that you know where items are located on the periodic table so that you know which ones will react differently, why that is because of the valence electrons, and then how atoms are, are, are built and arranged so that we can understand as we go through second six weeks what we're talking about. So if you're still having trouble there, please review some of my earlier videos in the first six weeks and kind of get a catch up or see me in tutoring if you get a chance, okay? So let's work, work at, look at the first uh, question. First question says that an atom has a charge of plus one. If the atom's nucleus contains 23 protons, the atom must have a certain number of electrons. Well, remember, protons are positive, right? So protons are positive. So we can never change protons, so we're stuck with these 23 protons, okay? Because we know the atom is a plus one, we know that it is not neutral, meaning that it cannot have an equal number of electrons. And so automatically we can get rid of this number, okay? And so if it had 23, they would cancel each other out. 24 electrons would mean that the atom is gaining negative things. If that were the case, then we would not be looking at a positive number. We would be looking at um, a negative number. So that's out, and that also cancels this one because it's also a larger number. So let's try the 22 electrons. So if we have 22 electrons, okay, remember they are negative, and we subtract these two numbers, 23 minus 22 equals 1. Well, the bigger number of the two will always carry this, the charge to what's remaining. So 23 is bigger than 22, and it's positive, so we end up with a positive 1 atom. Okay, so that is answer C. Okay, that's our answer. Okay, number two is just simply memorizing the people uh, responsible for the atomic theory. So it says, which statement best describes J.J. Thompson's plum pudding model of the atom? Okay, he thought that the atom basically was a bunch of uh, electrons embedded in a positive sphere. Okay. All atoms of the same element have the same number of what? Which is called the atomic number. Well, if you remember, the atomic number is that number above the symbol. So let's use hydrogen, for example. So hydrogen has a 1 above it. That 1 tells me that all hydrogens, whether they're isotopes or not, will always have the same number of protons. Okay. But we get used to saying, well, if we know the protons, we also know the electrons, right? So some of y'all may have chose electrons as your answer. Well, that is wrong because we know protons never change. No matter what the atom is, the proton number will always represent the atomic number. So how do the electrons change? Sometimes in chemical reactions, those electrons are given away or taken from other atoms or they're shared. So we know that protons will never change because they are in the nucleus, not surrounding the nucleus, okay? Okay, question four. Neutrons are neutral. This means that what? Well, if they are neutral, we know that protons, remember, are positive, and electrons are negative, and neutrons have no charge. They are neutral. Okay, Rutherford. Remember Rutherford? He had an experiment where he used gold foil, and he was shooting particles at that foil, expecting they would bounce off, kind of like a soccer ball hitting a, a brick wall. But what he found was those particles were actually going through the uh, foil as if it wasn't even there. And so he was very surprised by that. Well, if you remember our model that we know of about the atom, it has the nucleus with protons and neutrons in the middle. But then around that nucleus are these electron clouds that are surrounding the nucleus. I can't even draw these correctly because normally the electrons would be way off the page, way out here. And so what we got to remember is the space between the neutrons and the electrons is pretty much empty. There's nothing there. So these particles were actually going beyond or past the electrons and not hitting the nucleus. So we know that through that model, he realized that atoms are mostly empty space. Okay, question six. Based on the periodic table above, which of the following groups of elements should have very similar chemical properties? Remember, things that are similar have to be in the same group. So like group one going down, 
group two going down, and so on. So things that are in the same column have similar properties. So let's see what we got. We got manganese, and that is Mn right here. We have magnesium, which is right here. And then we have melodium, which is right here. The only thing that's common about these guys is they all start with M. They don't have anything chemically related with one another because they have different valence electrons. That makes all the difference, so that one is out. Okay, so let's look at the next one. Lithium, Li. Uh, sodium, Na. And then we have potassium, K. If you notice, they are all in group one, so that is a good answer. But let's check the others to make sure there's not a better answer. I don't see how there could be. Okay, then the second one, or the third one, C, says carbon here. Then we have iodine, which is here. And we have hydrogen, which is over here. Also, scattered around. No good. Then the last one that it has given to us is potassium. And potassium uh, is K, which we looked at a minute ago. We have aluminum, which is right here. And we have neon, which is right here. They're not even in the same period. None of those are. Okay, even if they were in the same period, they wouldn't have much in common other than they have the same energy rings. So D is definitely out. B is definitely the right answer. Okay, question seven. The periodic table is organized in a way that shows many general trends, including chemical reactivity, which is the likelihood that an element will react with other substances. On the table below, metals are colored in green and nonmetals are colored in blue. For metals, reactivity increases moving from right to left and from top to bottom across the table. The noble gases, which are group 18 if you remember, they are unreactive. But for other nonmetals, reactivity decreases moving from right to left and from top to bottom across the table. Which of the following elements is most reactive? Well, if we look, we have sodium, we have lithium, which is right above it, we have francium, which is right here, and we have uh, potassium right here. They're all metals. They're all left of the zigzag line. And so if we look here, metals are reactivity increases moving from right to left. So going this way, the metals get more reactive or unstable. Well, if you notice, they're all in the same groups. There's none of them that are more left than the others. But look right here. It says they also increase from top to bottom right there. So from top to bottom, they get even more reactive. So the very bottom one, francium, right here, would be the most reactive. So your answer was C. Okay, question eight. Which part of an atom determines how it will react with other atoms? Okay, remember this is all those guys that are sitting on the outside ring of the, of the, of the atom. Those guys are called valence electrons. So when we look at that, they are the valence electrons, the ones on the outer ring. By the way, that's hydrogen, one electron sitting in that ring. It's got one proton inside the nucleus and no neutrons for its common form. Okay, number nine. Which of the following is a non-metal? Well, let's look back. We have aluminum, calcium, potassium, and oxygen. So if we look back at our um, table here, let's erase some of this and see what we had. Okay, so we had aluminum, we had potassium, we had calcium, and we had um, oxygen. So which one is a non, or I'm sorry, which one was, let's go back and look at it again. Which of the following is a non-metal? Aluminum, calcium, potassium, or oxygen? If you notice, potassium, calcium, and aluminum are all left of the zigzag line. Okay, they're also all green, which tells me they're metals. Oxygen is the only one that is sitting on the right side of the zigzag line. He is the non-metal. And also, oxygen is what we're breathing in the air. We're breathing a gas. It is a non-metal. Okay, number 10. Based on the periodic table above, which of the following groups of elements should have very different chemical reactivity. So we're looking for atoms that are probably not in the same group of e with each other, okay? So let's see what we've got. Potassium, um, aluminum, and neon. Well, they don't have anything in common, so probably that's my answer, but I never want to go with just A until I see the other stuff. So let's see what else we got. Uh, beryllium, BE, uh, magnesium right here, and calcium right here. So they're on the same group. That is out. Okay, next one is lithium, Li, 
Then we have sodium Na, and we have potassium K. They're in the same group. They're out. More than likely, the next one's going to be the same way. Letter D, helium, right here. Uh, then we have neon, right here. And then we have argon, right here. Same group. They're all in group 18. They have similar properties. So my answer is definitely going to be A. Okay, question 11. Blank have a charge of positive 1. Well, if you remember, protons were positive, weren't they? Electrons were negative. And neutrons had no charge. So protons, each proton we have has a 1 plus charge. Each electron has a 1 elect, uh, negative charge. So our answer is D. 12. Which of these is part of an atom that contains the protons and neutrons? So it contains these guys. It's where we get the mass of the atom. It is the nucleus of the atom, remember? The protons and neutrons sit in the nucleus. The electrons go around in a cloud around the nucleus. 13. The parts of an atom that are involved in chemical reactions are the, well, they got to be the ones on the outside ring, right? Whatever the outside ring is, those electrons are the ones that we are responsible for being given away or taken from. So electrons. A better answer would have been valence electrons, but it's not there. Okay. Okay, next uh, question. Along each row, remember we have uh, seven rows. They all go from right to left. That's one row, another row, and so on. We have seven of them. They're called periods. What happens? Well, we're looking at the atomic mass. Okay. That's the atomic weight is what it's called here. So the atomic mass changes in no set pattern. Well, 1.008, 4.083, 6.94, 9.012, 10.81, and so on. They keep getting bigger from left to right and from top to bottom. So yes, there is a pattern. That's not good. Atomic mass is the same for all elements in the row. They're not the same. They keep changing from left to right. And they keep getting bigger. The atomic mass decreases from left to right. They're not decreasing, 39, 40, 44, 47. They're getting bigger. The atomic mass increases from left to right. Yes, they do. D is our answer. Okay, question 15. Which of the following ideas did Greek philosopher Democritus contribute to the atomic theory? He said that all matter is composed of small particles which combine to make larger objects. 15, 16. Elements that are arranged in the same column of the periodic table belong to the same family of elements. The atoms of elements in the same family all have the same number of valence what? We look back at the previous question in our test. Or let's go backwards, I'm sorry. We go back. We'll see it. Valence electrons right there. So use parts of the test to help you with what you don't know. Okay? The valence electrons in the outer shell. So we're talking about electrons here. Okay, next question, 17. Each element is made of small particles called atoms. This is the first idea of John Dalton's blank theory of matter. Remember, he was after Democritus. So really, he started the idea that Democritus was onto something, and it became known as the atomic theory. A proton has a mass of what? Remember, we kept talking about protons equal neutrons in their weight or their mass. So these guys, uh, protons and neutrons, equal one another. And how they equal each other? By their weight or their mass. They all have a weight or mass of 1 AMU. Okay, so we can't use grams because that's too big of a unit to use with atoms. This number actually is the weight of an electron. Look how small it is compared to what a proton or neutron is? Our answer is definitely C. Each one of those, one proton is one AMU, one neutron is one AMU. 19. If an atom has 15 protons, 14 neutrons, and 18 electrons, what is the atom's electrical charge? Well, we know neutrons have no charge, so we're going to throw that away. 15 protons tells me it has 15 positive things, right? And 18 electrons says 18 negative things. Okay, so 15 and 18, that's a difference of 3 to get equal, right? 15, 16, 17, 18. So which was the bigger number? The 18 was, and he was negative. So that atom has a negative 3 charge. Okay, question 20. 
Which statement is true about the properties of the majority of the elements in the far left column of the periodic table? Far left, let's go back. We're talking about these guys, right? Hydrogen, francium, and so on. Okay, well remember it said that the atoms that were moving from right to left got more unstable or more reactive. So these guys are the bad boys. They are very unstable. Okay, so unfortunately these guys, they just have one electron in their outer ring. And so they are very reactive. They want to get rid of that thing at all costs. Okay, so they're very unstable and they are kind of dangerous to mess with. And also, as we go down, they get even worse. Okay, so when we look at those, go back to our question here. They are highly reactive. We get less reactive as we move to the right. Okay, which of the following statements is true? The nucleus of an atom contains protons and neutrons. I know that to be true. Protons are located outside the nucleus of an atom. No, that would be the electrons, so that's wrong. Individual atoms can be seen with the naked eye. Not unless you are like, have superpowers better than Superman. We can't see them without an electron microscope, okay? Electrons do not have a mass. Well, that's almost true, but not quite. Remember we said a minute ago that this is the mass of an electron? Look how much smaller it is than one AMU. It's a portion of an AMU, a much smaller portion, 0 0.0005489. So it does have mass, but it's insignificant. It's not something we calculate. So most of the blank of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus. So most of the mass is concentrated in the nucleus. We don't we ignore the electrons when we calculate mass. Okay, question 23. The noble gases include helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. What properties do these elements share? Okay, they're in group 18. Remember that far left or for, far right column right here? Let's go back. So right here in this area, these guys remember they all have a full valence shell. They have all the electrons they'll ever need. So they don't want to give any away or take any away, so they are completely stable. They will not readily form compounds with other elements. They don't want to. They don't want to give away their electrons or take any away. Okay, which part of an atom has a negative charge? We've covered that quite a bit in this test already. It is definitely the electrons. Okay, 25. How are elements arranged in the periodic table? Let's go back and look. We're looking at atomic number alphabetically by date of discovery or by atomic mass. Let's go look. Okay, here's a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, all the way down here to 110. If we look at the atomic mass, 1.008, 4.003, 6.941. They are arranged in both areas, but the one that is most obvious would be the atomic number. Are they arranged alphabetically? Absolutely not. That's an H, H, E, L, I, B, E. See, it just breaks. B, C, N, O. Not, not alphabetically. And definitely not by discovery. If you remember uh, Mendeleev, which we have an atom named Mendelevium after him, he discovered, he started arranging this table originally, and he left blank spots because he knew, like for example, maybe this atom hadn't been discovered yet. Maybe this atom hadn't been discovered yet. And so he left blank areas in the table knowing they might be discovered later on. And he was exactly right. And so he left spots available. And so the answer to that question is definitely atomic number. Okay? So it's arranged by atomic number. 26. The periodic table below shows elements that are metals, nonmetals, and metalloids. Well, metals are yellow, nonmetals are pink, metalloids are blue. Okay, based on the periodic table above, which of the following elements is a metal? Remember, all the metals are to the left of the zigzag line. Well, here's oxygen right here. Here is lithium over here. Here is chlorine right here. And here is helium right here. The only one that shows up to be a metal is lithium right here. So lithium is the only metal. Okay. 27. An uncharged atom has six electrons. Well, it said it's uncharged, and it has six electrons. The nucleus of the atom must contain blank protons. Well, if it has six negative electrons to be uncharged, it must also have six positive protons because six minus six equals zero charge. So the answer is B. 28. 
28. The majority of elements on the periodic table are what? Well, let's go back and look. What's all these yellow things I see everywhere? Look how many there are all the way around here. Most of them are metals. Let's go look. Non-metals, gases, liquids, or metals? Definitely metals. 29. All atoms of a specific element have the same number of blank. What did we say never changes? The protons will never change, right? The positive protons never change. Electrons can be taken away or added to. Neutrons never change e either, but all atoms of a specific element have the same number of protons. Why not neutrons? Well, it said of, of any specific element. So that could include the isotopes, meaning atoms that have different numbers of neutrons. But even in isotopes, the protons will always be the same. Okay? Last question. An atom with an equal number of electrons and protons has no what? So if it has six, we'll just go back to the last question. We had six electrons, we have six protons, and if we subtract those two numbers, we get zero what? Zero charge. Okay, overall, this test was not as difficult as I could have made it. So um, you need to kind of concentrate on what I've got right here and be prepared for your semester test. This stuff will show up again. This stuff will show up also on your STAR test this year. So just be aware of that. Don't start forgetting this information. It's really important you remember it and that you uh, continue to review this video or go back and look at some of the previous videos about isotopes, ions, the atomic theory, how to draw atoms, how to read the periodic table. Those are all really good videos to stay up and fresh on what's coming up and, and how we can continue to remember this. It's going to make it a lot easier for you in high school to know this information, okay? So I uh, hope this helped. If you have any further questions, feel free to see me in tutoring, shoot me an email, and I'll be happy to respond back to you guys, okay?